my name is Lisa. I hope you enjoyed the Jingle Bell Hop. So you probably have a mug rug, the Christmas Elf mug rug that you picked up from In Between Stitches. And this is our video tutorial to help you learn how to put your paper piecing together for this project. And then you'll have this cute little uh, Christmas Elf mug rug. The first thing that you need to do is copy it off on a, another piece of foundation paper. What I'm using today is by Alex Anderson, and it's the Select Print and Piece. It's, a it's for foundation piecing. Uh, what the cool thing is about this is, is you can copy it on your home uh, printing machine, but you don't have to rip it away. It's supposed to dissolve after you wash it. So I haven't had a chance to actually test it in the washing part, but so far it works pretty well. It's also very flexible and actually acts more like a fabric than the paper. But um, paper piecing with the traditional um, newsprint style paper works great with this as well. So the first thing you're gonna do is this little guy at the end, oh, we're not really going to um, foundation piece him, so you can just cut that piece off and we're just gonna work with the hat. So the first step is you're going to trace the lines from the front to the back. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, basically the reason why you want to trace the lines onto the back is so that it, it acts like a guide, so you know which way to um, position your fabric. So we'll always sew on the front, but we'll position our fabric on the back. So I've already pre-cut a few of my fabric pieces. I tried to cut my pieces about an inch larger than the piece that I'm going to, to need for, um, for my foundation piece. So you look for the number one on the foundation piecing. Number one is part of the background. My background is going to be green and my hat is going to be red. Now this, this pattern turned out really cute, making it scrappy as well. With this one, of course, my background was cream, but my hat was all these little scrappy reds, and then I used some chenille for the cuff and, and the pom-pom. Now, you don't have a template on here for the pom-pom. Basically, just trace a quarter, and you'll have the right size pom-pom for uh, whatever you want to use, whether you want to make a little yo-yo, or use some chenille, or you know, you actually even tie a little pom-pom, or whatever you want to do for that part. So after you've traced it, you're going to start with number one. Number one is the back or the background. So you're just going to select your first fabric and you're going to lay it right on top. And you want to be sure that every little bit is um, covered. There's not going to be any portion of number one that's going to be showing. And then you just pin it right in place. Now what I like to do is find where number two is. I will sometimes make sure I have about a quarter of an inch overlap right there. Now with number two, it's part of my hat. So I'm going to lay my hat. It's going to be right sides together and as I as you see them on that line, you fold it up and you're going to see that it's going to um, fully cover number two. And I'll pin that in place. And I'll take it to my sewing machine and I'll do my first seam. Our first seam is going to be right on the printed line right between, uh, between number one and number two. The fabric that is in number one is always going to be the fabric that is right side up and everything else is going to be right side down. So I start from the, the very uh, beginning of that line and I usually do a small stitch, about 1.8, and then I'm going to end at that line. I'm going to take out my pins. Now, it's always uh, handy to have a card. Uh, I just use one of those reorder um, cards out of a quilting magazine. Uh, but a 
any type of card, postcard that comes in the mail will do. Now I flip it over to the, um, the right side. I line my card up right between one and two, right on that line. Now I'm going to fold my foundation piece back. The add a quarter inch ruler is very handy. I just lay that right on and you can feel it just touch right against that that cur uh, the, the groove of the paper and then I just trim away any excess. Now you don't need one of these, you can just use a regular small ruler and uh, line up your quarter of an inch and then trim it away, but it, um, the add a quarter inch ruler makes things very convenient. So now I just flip it over and I just give myself a little fingernail crease or you can use the iron. Now this is a big piece of fabric and I've got to lay on the next piece which is number three. Number three is also a part of the hat but it's going to be really difficult to figure out oh where does number three go. So I'm going to do the exact same thing that I just did so that I have a nice clean edge to cut on. Use my card I'm going to lay it right on the line between two and three, fold it back, use my quarter inch trimmer, and I'll trim away that fabric. So now I have a nice clean edge to line up my piece number three. And then I always do a check. See, that's going to fully cover position number three. I just pin it to hold it, flip it over, and now we're going to sew on the line between number two and three. You can press it or just do a little fingernail press. So now my next piece that I'm going to add would be number four. See I have so much fabric covering it's going to be hard to see so once again I'm just going to flip it over. Find the line between three and four. Oops, fold it back. Use my add a quarter that has that nice little lip. and trim that away. So now my piece is ready for number four. So four is still part of the hat, so I'm going to add another red piece. And I'm going to sew on the line between number three and number four. Press it open. Just do a little fingernail crease. Now my next piece is number five. What helps too is if you look on the front where it's tinted, that indicates what's the house, or I'm sorry, the hat. So that would be the, an indicator of what color is next. So it's hard to find that line. So what I'm going to do is flip it over again, find the line between four and five, line up my card, fold it over, use my quarter inch ruler, Trim that extra fabric away and now I have a nice clean line to add my next piece. I'll line that up, pin it in place and then I'm going to sew on the line between four and five.
just trim it out. There we go, I just added my last piece and so now I can trim it back to being square. It's good to give this a little press once in a while. So you're going to trim on the outside solid lines, not the dotted line. That's actually where uh, you would sew it into a, um, a quilt or where the binding is going to get stitched on. That just shows where your quarter inch seam allowance is. Okay, now this is all ready to um, put on the little elf's face. So what you're going to do next is you're going to use some uh, double-sided fusible web product. Light is preferable. So I uh, just got some that was on a roll and so you can definitely feel one side is the paper and one side is the sticky. So I um, took the little guy's face and I, I traced my piece so that I had the shape of his face. Now my product is the kind that I just need to press it in place. Some is sticky enough that you don't need to press it. Just check your instructions of your product. Now you're going to press it or stick it to the wrong side of your fabric. And then with small scissors, just trim it out right on the lines. Now you can choose to either uh, trace his little face on or you can just uh, embroider it. I'm using um, a micron pen just to color it on. And then you can use crayons to um, make his cheeks rosy. Give him a cute little finish. You can press this into place, this time on the right side of your fabric. So I just position it so I know that I've got this in the right spot. So he's nice and centered. And then with your fusible product, you just press it in place. Okay, I am going to um, do a little blanket stitch around this edge, so just to hold it down. So I always change my foot for my blanket stitch foot. You want an open toe so that you can see better what you're doing. There it is. So you just select uh, a blanket stitch, an open toe, and some matching thread, and just do a blanket stitch to hold the elf's little face in place. Now if you want to add a little rosiness to his cheeks, it's not very hard. You just get some crayons, um, just color a little bit of pink onto his his little cheeks and then just use the iron and um, I just use a piece of scrap fabric so I don't get crayon on my iron and just heat set that color in place. Okay, got my blanket stitch done and now I can sew my elf together. So he's going to look like that. And since I'm using Alex Anderson's um, foundation, paper foundation, I don't have to rip it away. Um, 
Otherwise, I would have I would have ripped my paper away before putting this portion on. But it's supposed to dissolve, so that's kind of cool. Okay, then I just sew the little face onto the hat with a quarter inch seam allowance. And the piecing portion is all done. So I would just press him and then quilt him.